Hello, welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos. I'm a master beekeeper and today's lesson is on how to move and install a new swarm into a new apiary. Uh, I had a friend this morning contact me and let me know that she and her son had captured a swarm yesterday and she asked if I wanted it so I uh, happily went over and got it this morning. Uh, so I didn't think to film the first portion of the video uh, where we were transferring it from her box to mine. So basically I'll briefly describe how we did that. So all we did was we simply took my box I set up, uh, in this case, the transport box. I've got a separate video on how to transport uh, bees in nucleus colonies, basically the same concept. I've got a solid bottom board. Uh, in my case, I've got it together with uh, four hive staples, two on each side, uh, set at opposing angles. I've got a robbing and moving screen. And then I've got frames in here. Um, she was giving me five frames, so I just simply took eight frames over with her. I gave her five in exchange for her frames this morning. Um, and then I've got it strapped down with a uh, strap. And so it's all we did when we first got over there. Um, she wasn't sure if the queen was in there or not. Um, she was pretty sure it was there because it was a swarm and it left, remained there overnight. Um, but just to hedge your bets, I asked her if I could have a frame of brood just to entice the bees to stay there. Um, so we, she graciously gave me a, a frame of brood. And I'll explain that reason we did that here in a second. Um, but it's so all we did is we set the, my empty box next to her, took the frames out, uh, so it was an empty box. And then we pulled her frames out and we put them, since she gave, did give me a frame of brood, uh, I put it in the center and then she had some drawn comb frames. I put them next out, the next frames out, and then I put uh, foundation on the outside of that. Now, whenever I um, transport swarms or catch a swarm, I always like to have uh, frames with just foundation in it just to give them some work because remember when they do a swarm they uh, engorge themselves with honey in preparation of making comb uh, when they find their new home so I always like to put foundation in there just to give them some work to draw out comb um, then so all I did was like I said I put the her frames in there put the empty frames uh, on the outside and then at that point we went ahead and ship, put my box in her hives location and put hers on the ground um, and as you can imagine, when we uh, were pulling frames out, there were starting to bees flying everywhere. Uh, we were searching for the queen as we were um, pulling frames just to see if we could see the queen. We didn't see the queen, uh, but we did notice a ball of bees right under uh, her feeder that she had on it. So it's possible be, the queen should have been, uh, could have been in there. So we dumped all those bees in the box. Um, and then, as you can imagine, there were bees flying everywhere. Well. A simple way to handle that when you do that is just simply to leave the top open, leave the front open. In this case, the robin moving frame, uh, I had the gate open. I'm going to show you how I uh, unlock that here in a second. Um, but anyhow, I simply left the top off and then left the front open of the robin moving screen so that when you see the bees come back and they were immediately gravitating back to their original hive location. Uh, conversely, we could have moved my hive there first before we started transferring frames. It really didn't matter the process. Um, but again, to compensate for all the bees that are flying in the air, we just simply put her uh, mite box in her location, in the original hive location that she had overnight. Um, and then we just simply sat back and watched for 20 minutes or 30 minutes while the bees were figuring out what was going on. Um, and what you will see if you do this technique is you're going to see the bees will raise their, the workers will raise their abdomen in the air and expose their nasonoff gland. And if I can remember, I'll have a photo in the final product for you that shows you what uh, the bees, uh, what the nasonoff gland is and the bees fanning it. And what they're doing is they're signaling to their worker mates, hey, there's, here's our new home, here's our new home, come here. And within about 20, 25 minutes, we noticed that all the bees that were flying in the air were now inside the box and everything is nice and calm. Um, and getting back to the original of question or, or comment of me uh, asking her for a frame of brood, brood that contained eggs because she said that she wasn't sure that uh, she, the queen was in there. So to hedge my bets um, on if there's a queen in there or not, and uh, I put, asked her for a frame of brood that had eggs on it. And the reason for that is remember the stages of a honeybee is an egg, then it's a larvae, then it's a pupae, then it's an adult. Well, it's an egg for three days. Um, so today, Sunday, we installed the, the frames into my box and I transported them to my apiary. It's about 15 miles from where uh, Shauna lives. Um, and then I will come back in and inspect this hive in about four to five days. So probably Thursday night, Friday, uh, sometime I will check these hives and if I see 
eggs on Friday or Thursday evening whenever I check this, I know that the, the queen is still in there from the original swarm because remember it's an egg for three days and it uh, falls over and it closes from an egg into a pupae, or excuse me, into a larvae, misspoke, it closes into a larvae. So if I see eggs on that fourth or fifth day, I know that the original queen is in there and I do not have to either buy a separate queen or combine this uh, swarm with an existing colony that I have. Um, so that's why I asked her for the frame. The other thing that you want to do is when you catch a swarm, you want to make the conditions as inviting for the swarm to stay in the new box as much as possible. So that might be some old comb, some honey, if you have it. Again, honey from your apiary, never put honey from an outside apiary because you could invite egg and fowl brood spores. Uh, so if you have extra uh, honey in your from your own apiary or if you have drawn comb, put that in there and that'll say, oh, this is a nice home for us. And then to hedge my bets on the, again, if it's queenless uh, or not. So if it was a queenless swarm, like she thought, um, they can make those, when that egg it closes over into a larvae, they can make an emergency queen. Uh, and I should start seeing swarm cells being formed um, when I look in there Thursday or Friday. Um, but again, if I see eggs on Thursday or Friday, I know I've got a queen. The other nice thing about putting brood in here, the brood are constantly emitting out uh, a pheromone called brood ester and it says hey come take care of me take, come take care of me come feed me um, so it will cause the nurse bees that are in the uh, the bees are in the swarm to naturally want to gravitate and protect that brood frame so it gives them ever more reason to want to stay inside this new box that I put them in so if you catch a swarm and you have an existing colony consider putting a frame of brood in there with them because it will encourage them to stay in there. If you don't, it's all you've got is frames of foundation, that's perfectly fine. So now fast forward to, I in the second part of my video, you'll see me uh, how I transport it in the car. So I transported them in the back of my seat because I wasn't traveling very far. Um, I had a hat with a veil uh, attached to it in the car just in case I had bees that were escaped. If they escaped, um, I could quickly put it on in this case. I, had, I saw two bees, they must have flown in the car with me when I put them in. Uh, so I didn't have any problems transporting the bees at all. Okay, I'm at Shauna's house. Shauna is kind enough to give me a swarm. So it's all we've done is done the prep work. We transferred them from her swarm box into my transportation box. And my transportation box has a robbing and moving screen. It also has the hive staples. And so all we did is we moved them into the um, box I'm going to take them home in. And then I left the top up and I left the front of the robbing and moving screen in while the bees uh, reorient in, back inside the uh, new home. And then I, Shauna was also kind enough to give me a frame of uh, brood of all ages to entice the bees to stay uh, in the box even more. So thank you Shana and we'll go from there. Okay now I'm in my car. I've got the swarm in the back seat. Uh, I'll pan over just so you can see it. It's uh, just simply got its robbing moving screen. Uh, if I were traveling a long distance, then I would also uh, probably strap it in a little bit more. But you can see I've got the robbing and moving screen forward so that the bees get in plenty of air. I'm in my car. Uh, I turn the engine off right now just while I'm videoing. Uh, but uh, while I'm running, I've got air conditioning on just to give them some air uh, and keep from overheating in the car. Um, again, just a small segment of the video. Um, and I'll see you when I get home and put them in place. So now I'm in my apiary. I've got my hive set up where I want it to be. Um, so it's all I'm going to do is I have everything that I want to entice them to stay here even more. I've got a hive top feeder and I've got some um, sugar syrup one to one mix with some honeybee healthy. And again, I got a video on how to mix this. And then I'm going to simply open this up, open up the entrance, and then I'm going to put the hive top feeder on. Um, actually, I'm going to put the high top feeder on first, fill it full of syrup, and then I'm going to open it up where the bees can get oriented. And then I'm going to come back and check this, like I said, about Thursday or Friday. I've got the, this hive is facing south. Um, it's 
pitch forward like we always teach you. Um, so it's the hive stand is level, and then I've got a one by two furring strip on the back to give it that forward slope that we want uh, to keep uh, water, rainwater out. So here we go. And this brick just means that I've seen eggs or um, a queen. In this case, I've got eggs because we put them in there. So again, I'm just going to pull my strap off. And these straps are good to have just sitting around um, for strong winds. So I always carry one, keep one in my apiary anyway. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stir up my honeybee, my syrup with the honeybee helper one, one final time. And I'm going to put my veil on just in case the bees come flying out of there. Um, they shouldn't be aggressive because they are they were a swarm. They shouldn't be aggressive. Um, that's why I'm not wearing gloves. But again, I want to protect my eyes. <coughs> so there they are. I've got a piece of uh, pine straw in there where the sun was helping this morning. Um, so again, I'm just going to simply put my hive top feeder on this eight frame. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Just to let the bees clear out. So hopefully I haven't trapped any bees. Oh, I got one of the girls. And then I'm going to put the syrup in the Miller feeder. I love Miller feeders because um, it allows the bees to uh, be fed from inside their hive. This is just a um, one gallon of water. And I'm going to put a, a ventilated inner screen, ventilated inner cover on this. I forgot where I put it. Um, again, bees are great. Flyers are horrible swimmers, so I put this uh, ventilated inner cover in it so that no bees can get into the syrup from the top if they were to come out the front whenever I check on it. Again, Friday, I'll probably feed them again. Um, when I come back on Thursday or Friday, I got some girls here, I'm just going to let them knock them out. Um, when I come back Thursday or Friday, I'm going to put them in the new box because I'm gonna, I, I like keeping this box handy in case I find have a swarm I have to react to. Um, so I, I keep this. And so it's all I'm going to do Friday. I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to slide this box over into this box's place. Slide the new box, which has a slope landing board on it, um, a, solid landing, a uh, solid bottom board, a slatted rack, and then a deep hide body. I'll slide it over, slide this one over in its place, and I'll just transfer the bees to that. And it'll be, they'll be back in their orient. They'll have a new box that they got to orient to a new color, but not a big deal. So, again, now it's all I'm going to do. If I have a lot of bees in my apiary, I would consider leaving a, um, if I didn't have this robbing moving screen, I'd consider putting a entrance reducer in here. And in this case, I don't have that many bees in my apiary. So, uh, I'm just going to simply open this up. And you see that the girls, I just rotated it over. Um, and you'll see the bees are coming out now. And they'll get oriented, just show them, um, if I leave the video running long enough, you would see them do, doing orientation flights as they come out, getting accustomed to their new home. Um, and that's all there is to it, to moving and uh, transferring the frames to a new box and moving them to a new apiary. So short video, so thank you uh, for watching and have a great day.